Good afternoon. Welcome to Vermont House Judiciary Committee. Uh, we are working on track point one, five forty six, and actually into racial justice statistics. Um, this draft uh, should be on our committee website, and I think we've been results to have it um, in front of them. So welcome, Attorney Eric Patrick, to do a, a walkthrough of draft six point one. Good afternoon, Eric. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Hi, thank you. Sure. Eric Fitzpatrick with the Office of Legislative Counsel here to um, talk to the committee about the latest version of H uh, 546, which is an act relating to racial justice statistics. Um, I think I heard the chair say that everyone, does everyone have version 6.1? Yes. Great. So I can, um, do you have a preference about screen sharing or should I just indicate to the committee where the changes are between this version and the previous draft that the committee looked at? Yeah, why don't, why don't you do that? Thank you. Sure. So starting uh, from the first page, actually the one, one sort of piece that you may notice by its absence is that um, in the previous draft, this is talking about the duties of the executive director of racial equity. This is section one of the bill. The uh, um, first or, or the previous iteration that you looked at had included something specific about the director uh, in consultation with the advisory council, hiring a deputy director to oversee the administration and operation of the division. So that's been struck. You'll see later on that that the division now has what's uh, termed as a lead, but doesn't have a director, uh, sorry, a deputy director anymore, specifically in statute. So that piece was taken out. Uh, the, there are, haven't been any changes to the, if you're moving on to sub chapter two, which is talks about the division and the, see the first section, section 5,011 uh, is the broad statements about the mission and purpose of the division. That remains the same, no changes there. It's been that way since the bill was, was introduced, essentially identical. The duties that you see on page three uh, with reference to the division are also in the beginning unchanged about working collaboratively with other state agencies, collecting and analyzing data, conducting justice information sharing, et cetera. All of these duties and subdivisions one through seven are all exactly the same, no changes there. Um, you will see subsection B, this is on page four, and this is the reporting piece. You'll see there, that's the annual report that the, um, that the division makes to the legislature, both to, to the judiciary committees and the government operations committees. And there's uh, the second sentence of that subsection B, that probably likely to be li lines five to seven, I think of your version, but let me double check that. Um, the, uh, you'll see that there's a sentence that says, the report may include an operational assessment of the division's structure and staffing levels and any recommendations for necessary adjustments. And that may uh, no. ring, from, sorry, go ahead. Off of page, off of page four. Is that different? Yeah, let me pull that up. I was reading from a different version. So let me uh, make sure that I have the, um, Line number, line numbers, accurate. Line. Yeah. So that's that. If you're looking at that sentence now, it may uh, ring familiar to you. That was a suggestion that came out of a suggestion that Representative Rachelson had, in particular, to have that report specifically address um, whatever you know structural and staffing needs that the division might have and that presumably it would it would uh, do more experience and more conducting of its duties, it would have a better understanding of, of where it might um, have needs or whether adjustments, maybe there were too many people in one area or not enough in another. So that any adjustments that, that needed to be made could be included as a proposal in their annual report. So 
there's a, also, uh, and I have the page numbering right now, thanks. So uh, the next subdivision, subdivision one, we're talking about data governance now. There's some new language here as well. And this is um, also the very bottom of the page lines, 17 to 21 or so. And this has to do with the issue that, that there's been uh, quite a bit of discussion in committee about, and that's the public records nature of the data that the division uh, gathers. Remember sort of the general, the general policy that the uh, bill has now, it's different than the bill has introduced, but current policy, it's been through a couple of changes based on committee discussion and what you've heard from witnesses, is that uh, generally speaking, the uh, data that the division generates itself uh, will be up to the division to, to make determinations about whether it's a public record and how to handle public records requests, that sort of thing. But if, uh, if it's a document or, or data that is transmitted records that are sent to the division from uh, another state agency, which is gonna happen quite a bit with this entity because that's their mission is part, part of their mission is collecting this data from other state entities. Uh, in that situation, the, um, the originating agency will be the sole records custodian for purposes of responding to these public uh, data requests for those data. So for that, for those particular pieces of data slash records that have come from somewhere else, then that other agency will be the sole records custodian for responding. <clears throat> the division's got some discretion to either direct request to, to that transmitting agency or not. And then the new language you'll see, um, this is I think uh, what Representative Leffler and Representative Lalonde and others were discussing and this comes uh, from that, comes out of that um, discussion. And Tucker Anderson, the public records attorney in our office helped with this as well. So that's lines 18 to 21. So it clarifies here that, that while the division may direct any requests for, for those data to the transmitting agency, and that's the stuff that came from the, that other agency initially, provided that the division shall respond to a PRA request for non-identifying data used by the division for preparation of its reports um, that it's required to, to make to the legislature. So in other words, if um, it's non-identifying data that the division is using for preparation of its reports, then it makes the um, response to the Public Records Act request. So it wouldn't be able to transfer those back to the, the state agency. It's, its own data that it has generated for purposes of the report. So it makes some sense for the division to respond when there's public records act requests for that data. So that's where that came from. And that's the new piece there. Um, no changes to the management language about how it manages the data in consultation with the archivist and, and um, the agency of digital services, that's all. Uh, identical to what it was in the previous graph that you saw. Same with respect to uh, establishing the, the access to management programs for various uh, uh, data that it collects, no changes there either. The next uh, change that you'll see is actually in the next section. This has to do with the council. We're getting now outside of the division and to the council, which you remember is um, has an oversight and uh, consultation policy, consultation recommendation role with respect to the division. And you'll see probably immediately when you look at it, which this is on page seven, about the membership of the council starts on line three. You'll see it's quite different than the previous draft that you looked at. In that draft, the council had 20 members. Uh, here it's been cut back to seven. So there's seven members total. Uh, the member appointed by the governor is the same. And actually the, the members of these seven were in the previous version as well. It's just that the, there were various other entities that had members on the council as well. The chief justice of the Supreme Court, attorney general, defender general, various state agencies, et cetera. All that has been uh, removed and the remaining seven members are one, the person uh, with substantive expertise in community-based research on racial equity, that's the governor's appointment. And then six more uh, individuals who are appointed by the six agencies or six 
not state agencies, but six organizations, six entities, which you see starting on line 18 of page seven. So they make uh, these six appointments uh, and, and they, the, those six appointees uh, have to have uh, either experience with or knowledge about uh, the five qualities that you see listed on lines 10 through 16. So that's all the same. So it's just the, the numbers, how many people are on the council uh, has changed, but these, these characteristics that the, the nominees and who makes these nominations is the same. Uh, and that's when I should have mentioned that. It's a, a, a small but important change. That was on line eight. The previous draft actually said six individuals who have experience with one or more of the following situations it added here is experience with or knowledge about. So it broadens the, the pool a little bit. All right, moving on to, so that now we're, talk, we're still talking about the council. So, uh, the qualifications are the same. The terms on page eight, uh, there's just a technical change here that uh, line 13 or actually uh, line 11 uh, that originally said uh, members shall serve until their successors are elected or appointed. But because of the change in who's on the council, there aren't any elections anymore, no legislative members anymore. Uh, so it's only appointments, so need, no need for that language. And then you'll see, this is new here at the bottom of that page, starting on line 18. These are liaisons, and this role has been added in this draft. These are the folks who were originally part of the council. And we just dropped the, the number on the council from 20 to 7, and a, and a significant, not, all, not the legislative, members, but the other members of the council, rather than having an actual membership role on the council, the draft now proposes that they have a liaison. And the responsibility of a liaison would be to obviously consult uh, if needed. That's what you see in line 19 and 20. Each of these entities have to appoint a person to serve as liaison with the council for purposes of providing consultation as needed. And those 10 entities that you see there, Supreme Court, AG, DG, et cetera, are the same folks who were originally members of the council. So now they have a liaison role rather than being actually a member. This is, takes us over to page nine and actually it's uh, bottom of page 10 where I wanted to direct your attention to next. And none of, no changes here to the uh, language about the meetings, compensation, et cetera, duties of the council, that's all exactly the same, but there is a sunset and you see line 10, page 10, the council sunsets in five years. So in June 20, June, sorry, June 30th, 2027, um, my understanding, I wasn't actually avail, uh, able to attend the meeting, but that this came out of the meeting with the government operations committee this morning, that this was where that concept originated. There are some technical changes a little bit during the implementation section. This is just cross references that have been changed in lines 18 through 21 on page 10 and the beginning of page 11. This is just to, because the number, as I mentioned, the number of appointments dropped from 20 to seven, these cross references had to be uh, corrected as well. Uh, the positions, you'll see I mentioned earlier that the position on line, page 11, line six. Um, it's not a division, not a deputy director now, it's a division lead. So that's the uh, person who will work with the director of racial equity and re preserves the requirement that the division lead be an IT uh, data analyst. The other two positions, uh, actually that was originally four positions, line eight, um, now has two full-time exempt IT data analysts. That was four in the previous draft, four positions. So now it's got two, so that's been reduced as well. And the uh, appropriation has been modified uh, in, in response to and incorporates uh, the Joint Fiscal Office's fiscal note. And I, I spoke with JFO uh, at some length about this to try and make sure the numbers are correct. And these numbers are, I guess this is a pretty common, um, 
approach when a when a new state entity is um, stood up. So in other words, when it's getting started, uh, these numbers are based on an 80% of the year cost. And the reason for that is the assumption is that when a, a new entity is just getting started, say it starts, say, you know, the, the act is effective July 1st. Well, the agency is not going to be up and running in current costs on July 2nd. It takes some time for uh, before meetings start to happen, before staff uh, is begun to be organized, before any costs are incurred, it doesn't happen right away. So they generally use an 80% figure for year one. And then for year two, it would be 100%. Um, but so these, these figures that you see that are the, um, the appropriation, the $363,000 appropriation from the general fund to the office for, of racial equity for the division of racial justice statistics, that's an 80% of one full year figure. Same with the, the per diems in subdivision two, that 3,360. Um, now, subdivision three, the 520,300 for the division, sorry, for the uh, agency of digital services, that's a 100% figure. And that's because that's a one-time cost. That's the understanding. That's not gonna be needed in subsequent years. That's a, that's a first year only cost for uh, ADS. But otherwise, uh, you could certainly change those numbers if you if you wanted to go to 100%. But my understanding from JFO is that that's not the general approach during year one of a newly established state entity. Uh, and so if these numbers are 80% or these numbers are 100%, but we would work from 80. No, they, those numbers are 80%. Okay. Um, okay. And this is the new fiscal note? Correct. Okay. Um, was it was the original fiscal note like nine sixty or something? Nine hundred and sixty thousand. I think so. Uh, yeah, I think so. And the original was the same eighty percent. No, the original was one hundred percent. So I think that's partially why it's less. No, I think the original. Uh, <clears throat> 960 was based on 80% as well, I think. I'm fairly oh. certain. All right. Yeah, man. So, so the 960 was 80% of, of what the full year cost was, correct? Okay. For five and so the, the full year's cost now is 886. Um, are you looking at the fiscal note? Yeah. Okay. Times 80%. 709, okay. I just have something clarifying. Sure. So the advisory council, now you've got a total of seven. Am I reading that right? Yeah, yes, that's right. So there's seven there, and then we renamed from whatever the original group was, now we're calling them uh, li liaisons, right? Exactly. And we've, got, and we've got 10 more there, correct? So we're yep. back up to 17, and I think originally we started at, well, it grew to 23. But ladies, uh, I think it was 20, or at least in the council. It was 20. Right? It was 20 in the council. So then, um, Actually, can I, because I, sure. um, you asked when you're talking about um, liaisons, you were then saying we're back up to, like you're putting those folks back into the um, committee. And my understanding was that they're, that that's not the case. And so when I clarify with it, with well, Karen, well, at least the, the 10 liaisons are just going to be. A, a, a connector from the department to the board, right? I mean, they aren't going Correct. to be. Correct. Yeah, they aren't going to be a member of the board. They aren't going to get a stipend. They're an employee of the department. And if there's information to be uh, shuffled back and forth between boards and departments, they'll that'll be them. Exactly. And, and, the, and the duties under subsection D are not for those liaison. It's for those seven individuals. Right. And they're not decision exactly. makers on that seven 
member board. And is that is that what you're thinking? Or well, yeah, but I mean, what you're thinking or? yeah, but there, I guess you're naming them for a reason, um, which if they were going to be doing that anyway. Well, well, it's because they're key players. And, and we've done that in other legislation, identified key players from existing uh, departments within state government. Uh, and we want people to understand that that's that direct relationship to that department or division in question. Right. My One of my biggest concerns is we already have we already have a uh, part of this that the governor's already created it, but you want to create really a whole new division or certainly expand a lot more on what's already created. In, so, actu in actuality, that's why we took them out of the actual bill as part of the committee was because of the relationships that already exist. And you know, your points well taken, we're not expanding, you know, we're just ensuring that these folks are the key folks that can be referred to during the course of doing business underneath the new division. So, so the point, hold on, hold on, let me see. So, um, Eric, does this language, um, by the way, does that, that appear in the um, green books? Or would it be session law? It's in the green books. Which are, I'm sorry, which language are you referring to? Language regarding the liaisons on um, line 18, what we're talking about now on page eight, following entities. Is that, is that part? It's in the green book. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, yes. uh, Martin and Tom. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't want to get argumentative, but this isn't creative. There, this is not in existence now. This is not, you know, the, the racial equity office does not have the capacity, does not have the directives and the, the details of how to get this done. Yes, in a broad sense, it says, director, you are to gather racial uh, uh, data or different data, even broader. Uh, but this is an office that actually creates the ability to do so. It creates the division to be able to do so. It simply, you know, this is not something that is redundant to what's already there. Exactly. So, so, so in this bill, our I think I know the answer, but are departments in the state mandated to pass along information that, that's been requested around uh, uh, racial statistics? Yes, that's in the bill. Okay. So, so the way I would look at a liaison, all they're doing is taking that information and giving it to the board. Be probably their main duty. That could be something that, that they could be working on, absolutely. Yeah, it, it could be, but we constantly fight. One of my biggest problems with this bill is, is the lack of sharing of data and and the pushback that we get from each department of it. Mm -hmm. it and we're going to continue. So you can say that, yeah, they're going to be forced to share it, but I don't really agree with you there. I mean, they're not doing it now. How's this going to force them to do it, Eric? Uh, I we're mean, not I suppose asking if for they it wanted now. to. Uh, <laughs> um, Eric, um, I think. Go ahead, Eric. Well, I was just going to say that, that I agree that, that there's not an enforcement mechanism in the statute. So uh, if, they, if they wanted to disobey the, the legal requirement, I, I, you know, I, that could sort of lead to other problems. But if they're intent on doing that, yeah, there's no enforcement mechanism. Okay. We, we did basically the same thing. Like day one, when we looked at this bill, I brought up the silo, uh, breaking down the silos that we did eight, 10 years ago in human services. And with the small changes in this bill, and as the bill uh, became what it is, it's basically what we did back then. 
is yeah. the different departments within the agency of human services weren't sharing inf you know, pertinent information with each other. And we mandated that you, without penalties, that, that you share your information and it happened. Maybe not 100%, but it was happening to the extent that uh, uh, it, uh, important information was getting shared. So uh, I, I don't think it's important to have a, a penalty system. Uh, I think that the mandate is, uh, is enough. I think people will be held accountable um, by you know, the board or, or whoever, even whatever administration is in place at that time. Mm -hmm. Especially with, a, with a, uh, a sensitive topic like this. Oh, yeah. I can't see anybody saying, <laughs> no, I'm not going to give you racial equity information. <laughs> Coach is laughing on that one. <laughs> I, I just don't think that's going to happen. Okay, well, we need to be on the floor.